we're here because a generation of dancers before us believed in their performances and I, I think this generation wants to do the same thing for the next audience and for the next generation of dancers. Welcome back for part two of Bar Talk with Daniel and Danielle. So excited to have you guys. Thank you guys for joining us. Absolutely. Okay, so last week you did speed round and it was totally amazing. Um, and this week, I just want to dive in to talk about dance a little bit. And this is the most direct question I can ask. What do you love most about ballet? Oh, man. I it's mean, hard. for me... No, I, um, for me, I think it's going to vary for so many people, but for me, I think it's the sort of like the ability to create sort of like your own personal like regimen. Like, you know, it's like I start my day like this with class and then I have the ability to either create or hopefully restage a work and then I get to be the interpreter of that work. And yeah. it's one of those careers too that's really almost daily, you know, you kind of feel, how do I want to say it? like the end result, right? You know, you have the ability of seeing that hard work always come to fruition. I, I think that's one of the things that's really fulfilling about it. Um, and I think you get that from going from a student to a professional when you're really performing a lot more, or even if you get it as a student growing up with the performance opportunity, there's such a joy when you're, I don't know, going through the process of learning all this vocabulary, learning these steps, but you actually have an outcome. And that's a performance. It's the culmination of all that hard work, dedication. And it is maybe, a fleeting moment in time or maybe it's doing a full-length ballet but the point is all that work has led up to something very special very yeah. personal very technical very artistic I, you, there's so many layers upon it and i think the thing i like about it is it draws on all of that there's a physical aspect there's a mental aspect there's an intellect that it requires um and just really a full investment you can't do this career halfway yeah and i think because of that you know you look at how to live your life to its fullest and richest and, and try to be inspired and, and, and try to, you know, know that your performance hopefully can inspire someone else. And, you know, we're here because a generation of dancers before us believed in their performances. And I, I think this generation wants to do the same thing for the next audience and for the next generation of dancers. And I think when you look at it that way, I think it kind of is grounding and, and humbling. And so I, I like, being part of that legacy to, to pass it on. Um, but yeah, I think it, it, just from the taking class every day to now seeing that it really does impact people, it's very special. What he said, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. Yeah. Nailed it, good job, okay. Um, oh, this is for both of you. And I think that what we're talking about with the history of where we came from, who was your most influential teacher? teacher oh boy oh boy do you want to go first no ladies first oh gosh <laughs> uh oh i'd have to think through this actually even though ballet is not what i pursued because i'm mainly musical theater uh i'd have to say my ballet teacher um at my studio again that i just i spoke about before mm -hmm. um that i grew up at uh she knew how to take my facility um, and correctly have me work on my technique. But I, she also allowed me to really imbue myself in the movement instead of being stuck in certain confines. So that really helped me stylistically, I think, grow in my other work as well, because I knew, again, how to work correctly. And previously, I actually, it, everything was kind of being forced turnout wise and some other things. And at a young age was suffering some injuries that I never should have been through the severity of. Um, so she kind of took me back a few steps, but also worked me incredibly hard, but allowed me to be me. And I was always maybe a little over animated, <laughs> um, a little over expressive, but she allowed me to do that while still um, working the way she saw, she saw fit, which is the professional way to do it. So probably her shout out to Miss Lisa Denias. Woo. <laughs> yes, we love Miss Lisa Denias. Okay. <laughs> and? I mean, as a young student, I had to very influential um, teachers. Um, in the last episode, we talked about somebody who really lit that fire um, for me and his name was Leonard Holmes. Um, he was the one who 
really hooked me into ballet. I think he, he's the one who let me wear the backwards baseball cap and the sweatshirt and shorts and said ballet was for everyone. And I think that was just such an important thing. Um, and in the same vein, I always have to say my other teacher, Javier de Brock, who was sort of my, my classical teacher. I mean, he was from National Ballet of Cuba and the balance of getting such great training with such great inspiration, I think is it's part of the formula of how people get to where they get to, right? And, you know, it's a miracle that people get to pursue their dreams in life, I think. And there's so many people who are a part of that. Um, and these teachers just were so influential in the, the example of their technique, but also the heart of what kind of, they shared their passion for dance with me and it made me want to have my own passion for that. And I think that's partly why we're here. Oh, I love it. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I love that you said that because I actually have um, a, a younger boy. His name is Cade and he has so much personality and he was getting so frustrated at the bar. And I was like, I need you to watch videos of Daniel because right. he has, yeah, I said he has so much personality and it, it's not like the ballet is trying to go like this to him. He's going like this. And since that moment, he's fallen in love with ballet. And every second he's like, did you see this? I'm like, I've seen that. So thank you, Daniel, for that. One day you'll meet Cade and you'll understand what I mean. <laughs> okay, so um, here we go. Okay, so you two are life partners, right? And in musical theater, there's tons of partnering work and in ballet, there's tons of partnering work. What do you guys love about partnering work? And what do you think that dancers really need to give to one another with that partnering work? What would you say from your experience? Uh, I'll be very candid and honest about this. I'm a horrible partner. <laughs> um, so I need somebody very patient with me. Um, very kind and very generous and very patient because um, I'm willing to do whatever they need so you know it can look seamless um, but also that we feel good and trusting about it um, and so I mean there's no one I think his other partners would agree um, there's no one you could trust more or you know nor who's more patient than, than this guy so I mean I really hit the jackpot because Again, I, there's a lot of partnering in some of the shows I've been in, um, tons, uh, especially some, some ballroom work and um, some flips and all sorts of things that I really hadn't been used to. And coming from an experience where uh, it was a little more of a volatile situation to something so, so calm. Yeah. And I, I knew I could try to tackle new things because it was with him. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it might sound cliche, but it's really true, especially with, with this guy. So um thanks, <laughs> thanks. Well, right now it's a pot de trois going on <laughs> exactly. that's the dog oh my god Gatsby Here oh is. great Gatsby oh, yeah. so cute. I love it okay so Daniel what is your what do you like about partnering work and what's the hardest yeah. thing about being your partner's therapist <laughs> like well, I mean to me I think it's you know partnering creates an extension of the possibilities of any single person, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think it's an extension of someone's balance, their, their, their turns, their, their line, their, their height, anything that goes with that. And so I think it's such a beautiful thing. And I actually, to be quite honest, um, especially much younger, and I still, it's one of the parts of my game I'm most eager to continue to grow and develop. Um, but I've always just felt like communication, you know, really understanding the needs of your partner and being able to convey that in such a generous way to realize you both are together on the same team to make that, that again, that phrase, that moment, that, that peace come to life. And to realize that it's the success of the two that makes the creation of the whole of that make sense. And, you know, I think a lot of times people don't know how to articulate, they know something's wrong, but they don't know how to really articulate that. And I think even with now technology, like stopping and like looking at it in slow motion together, like I think we can play with that more and it be something that's a great tool to know oh wait this is what I can do to help you and just being patient I mean I think there's just a lot of pressure to get it right immediately but when you see these great partnerships it's it's created over time and you know they're also given such great choreography that it feels natural so I would just encourage people to continue to communicate and to really learn how to kind of articulate exactly what they need to feel and that sensation and be patient. I mean, um, that's what builds trust and that's what ultimately builds magic, I think, between partners. 
Oh, amazing. Okay. Aside from dance, do you guys have any other passions? You go first, ladies. Me go first again? Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. I love tennis. Uh, I've always loved tennis. Um, so I grew up additionally like a pretty avid tennis player and take it very, very seriously. I'm very competitive. <laughs> um, but Who's your I, favorite tennis player? I Again, sounds cliche, but always been a Fed fan. Um, always love Murray because I used to watch him also progress through his career from when he was 17 on. So, and he signed a ball for me when I was little. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, you form these alliances as you go to go to the opens. Um, but I also really, I always loved academics. So, um, really passionate reader. I was an English major. So, love to read. Huge Shakespeare nerd. Um, so, wow. those are probably my two. <laughs> my two uh little hobbies out outside of dance i love it okay daniel well i have to say really recently um i think i've taken up tennis part of it was actually one of our first dates um yeah and yeah. it just i don't know i think i really appreciated the idea it does have a dance element to it but it's so physical it's so active it's coordination so that's actually something we've really had a chance over um quarantine and covid that we've been able to play pretty Consistently, I even started taking lessons. Yeah. Uh, I'm sticking See. to dance. I'm sticking to dance. But, okay. Uh, okay. Such a great outlet, and to be outside, it's such a great thing. Considering dance is mostly done indoors, and aside from that, um, I'm always trying to look at music. I mean, I have not gotten to my piano lesson recently, but like piano is something that I find in music very therapeutic and relaxing and creative, and something just for me. Um, so um, that's something I would say between tennis and, and piano, I would say it would be my things outside. I love it. This is so exciting. Yay, yay, yay. Danielle, I got to do a fitness episode with Venus Williams on her Instagram live. Whoa. And I don't know if you know this about the two of them, um, about both Serena and Venus, they're dance obsessed. Oh, we better. I we didn't better know that, out. but Venus has I mean, I'm not even just saying this, be, you know, to piggyback off your comment, but she has always been my, my favorite female, not hands down. That is so, that's so cool. Sorry, I'm fanning out. That is so cool. <laughs> We're working on getting her on Bar Talk, so you might have to be a drop-in guest. <laughs> I, I don't even know. <laughs> that's so cool. This, I think, is such an important question that we don't talk about, right? So what do you think that dancers stress out about that in the long time, in the long run, like really doesn't mean anything <laughs> at all? Ooh, uh, do you want to go first? No, you go first. Oh, we're going, to, okay. I'll go first again. Uh, I'd say two things. Um, I think we really are prone to kind of beating ourselves up in the moment if something technical goes wrong, when it's really just such a fleeting blip in the scheme of right. the amount of performances you're going to do. Um, and you know, that specific show, I mean, you're in there for an entire piece or an entire ballet or entire musical, you know, I mean, hopefully, you know, the rest of it performance wise goes really well. So, uh, I'd say that also in musical theater, there's a lot of, um, I mean, the broader term would be typecasting. Yeah. And I'd say sometimes just things are out of your control. And as long as you keep putting in the work and, uh, don't give up on, focusing on the different elements of your craft, um, especially getting into class and being seen by different choreographers. Um, I just think there's, there's nothing to worry about. If you're putting in the work, you'll see the results. Um, and as long as you still enjoy it, most important. Um, so even though there are ups and downs, you've got, you have to still love it. Um, so that's mine. Yeah. Those two. Oh man, for me, um, I think sort of to Danielle's point, I mean, these careers are very fast and the moments you're on stage are fleeting and we don't know exactly when the end of those uh, performing days are, but it's to really take advantage of, I guess I, I, it sounds so cliche, but live in the moment. I mean, I can walk away from performance and go, I know what worked, what didn't work. I still have an audience there that I want to go. There's nothing else in the world I'd rather be doing than performing right now in front of these people. And I will know, and maybe a few other people will know, the places I liked and didn't like, but 
in that moment, you have to realize that you are on sacred space on a stage with an audience with the energy of your colleagues and the music on and it's just so, so special. So I would say to, yes, strive for excellence, but don't get caught up in the perfection part because it robs the joy to me. And I rather, I rather be um, known as the dancer who could relate with people and relate with an audience than the one who just had the highest leg or the most turns for that sake and getting stuck on that and realizing that it's still a human performing for another human. You're trying to have an emotional connection and dance is your medium of how you're doing that. So don't lose, the, don't lose your heart as, as you're performing. I think the best thing that's come from this pandemic for performers is that we realize how much we love the stage and how valuable it is and how not to take that for granted, how much that we need to rely on ourselves to get to the next point, you know, out there, um, how much time that we have with our families and our loved ones, because I think as dancers, we give that up a lot, you know, as performers. Um, and I just think that all of those things have made us slow down and appreciate where we're going in the world so much more. Absolutely. Totally. Absolutely. You know, all the way through. Okay. What is, oh, this is the one. This is so good for both of you. Who is one of your favorite choreographers that you've ever worked with? Oh, I have my, I'll go. Laura Lutero, shout out to Laura Lutero. This woman, oh, she's so brilliant. She can do Say it her all. name again, because I think we missed it. No, to, uh, Lauren Lutero. Okay. Um, she is uh, one, I've just appreciated being in the room with her for many years now. Um, but I always learn from her. She's also just having the most wonderful trajectory of her choreographic career. She was on Broadway for ever and ever. Um, but she really can do it all. She can make the more pedestrian shows so interesting. And wow, can she choreograph something really heavily technical. So, um, and she just gives off the best energy you could imagine. And I, I didn't even really know what the term energy really encompassed until you get in a room with her and then you know. <laughs> you know right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, yeah, she has, she has my heart. Lauren Lutero. Love it. Okay. Um, gosh, for me, we're so lucky at City Ballet to have all these great choreographers come in and the ability to work with choreographers outside with other projects. But I have to say it's Rutmansky or Peck. I mean, these two, you know, artists really have such a way of moving the dancers. I'm gonna say specifically, well, anywhere, but at New York City Ballet, they just create such exciting dynamic work that showcases the company, its innovation, its, its, its pieces for now, for today, right? And they're part of that generation. And they push, I will tell you, they push me as an artist to continue to keep my technique high, to explore the artistry. Um, and they have such clarity, not only in the demand of the steps, but their intention. And I think that's something that's really exciting to see as a ballet choreographer. They're, they're layering that as part of their performance as well. And I think that makes it just even more interesting to dance um, when, when you have a piece like that, that's not just, again, hitting the fifths, nailing the turn, but they, they give you something else to think about with it, um, either through the creative process or you know, as you're performing it. Um, and they're, they're both living choreographers, so they come back and see their work and want to see it continue to be alive as the first performance they, you know, witnessed. Oh, I love that. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Are you ready? What's your favorite channel on TV? Oh, uh, lately? Bravo for me. What do you like on Bravo, Danielle? Oh, a lot. <laughs> Vanderpump Rules, Southern Charm, Below Deck. Oh. Below Deck! I've never cared about a pool noodle so much in my life. <laughs> See, oh, my God. I Yep. We really get along. <laughs> Danielle, I love you. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, so, there, well, so when we're not watching Bravo, we watch HGTV or Food Network, or I watch CNBC for right. news and stocks because that's my hobby outside of dance. So um, we pretty much live on five channels. I think that's the five channels we live on. Yeah. I was, you know, after I was so stupid about Below Deck, I was uh, afraid you were going to say something like, the Arts PBS channel. <laughs> like, oh, no. no. <laughs> I, I had the same moment trying to expose the fact, you know, into dating that I just loved Bravo. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> Not at all. You know, no. 
You know, the thing is, though, that I feel like I, I know about me, like when I hear music or I see things like I'm instantly inspired. Right. And I never stop working. But I love watching those shows because it has nothing to do with like our lives, you know yeah. what I mean? And I can just like completely veg out and I really start to care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Totally. So, totally so true. So true. Okay. I don't want it to end. Let's just talk all afternoon. Okay. This is the last question that I actually, I asked everybody the same last question because I think that our younger generation, um, I think what you spoke about earlier is that they don't enjoy the process as much, you know, and I think that they need to see such beautiful artists and people out there pushing and they need to understand that they need to be patient. So um, what is one piece of advice you would give your younger self? Your younger self. Oh my, oh my. Um, I'd say just because I took a recent pivot, um, granted, again, kind of like we talked about, all I would love to do is be back on the stage. But again, because musical theater is a little more, you're, I mean, obviously you're constantly auditioning for the, the next show, or the next gig, or um, I'd say there's no harm in the plan, plan A maybe not working. So maybe combining plans A and B. And that's kind of how I started to explore choreographing is, you know, if, if I wasn't being cast in necessarily the things I would really love to be in um, or that I thought fit me, Right. That you can you can kind of create that yourself. Um, and again, I'm very lucky to have <laughs> this guy uh, do a lot of it with me. But um, yeah, I just feel like you can you can kind of create your own way to showcase what you have to give. Um, and I just kind of thought it was going to be smoother sailing than it has been. And I'm so lucky that it and I don't know, feel kind of lucky that it hasn't been um, or that I was cast in things that I I mean, I did. I never thought I'd be in Rocky Horror and I did the Rocky Horror show for four years and I was in Dirty Dancing and I, I just, little naive me really never thought I was capable of those things, but they've led me to meet different people and again, to, to pivot into choreography, um, even though I'm still trying both paths, um, you, know, you can just forge your own, um, which, which took a little time to learn. But isn't that the story of most super influential artists in what we do, like Fosse, he didn't fit in and he found his, his own way, or Balanchine, or you know what I mean, or Bennett, like they, they didn't quite fit into what people wanted, but then they created what people wanted. So right. I think that that's a beautiful sentiment, Danielle. Yay. Okay, what about you, Danielle? I guess, um, you know, to, I think it's kind of a two, two prong thing. One is to don't, don't be afraid to go seek to get inspired. And I, somebody gave me a really great piece of advice a long time ago. And they said, you have to do what Nuriev did. And of course, unfortunately, our paths never had the chance to cross, but it was see all the movies that are out there, see different plays, see different um, productions, dance, non-dance, whatever the case may be. And keep, again, always keep a growth mindset because even though I've done this for 20 years professionally, I'm still surprised by this profession. And it's when I'm willing to go, I don't know this yet, or I haven't seen that before. It's what gets my wheels turning. And, you know, we'll come back and I'll go, wow, I just, I, I can't stop thinking about that idea. And not being afraid to really realize that if you have a growth mindset, you're going to continue that, that process as you do as a student. And it's only going to make you a richer artist and I think more valuable later on in your career because you you maybe took that opportunity that you didn't think was normal, right? Uh, or you you put yourself in that unfamiliar situation. Those are all growth opportunities, and I think it's a it's a matter of choice whether you do that again or not. But you have that experience and opportunity to look back on, and that's what's going to make you a more um, educated person. And you know then how that will affect you, or maybe that becomes a, a learning tool for somebody else that comes across your path. So. Um, just be constantly teachable and wanting to learn. I, if that is the, we're all, we're never going to stop, right? It's like, it, I can get a double pirouette, but tomorrow I've got to do a double pirouette or I need to help somebody learn to do a double pirouette. And that, that satisfaction of that continuum is, I think what helps us continue to take class every day or to teach class every day or to, to create 
that opportunity for somebody to do that. So be teachable and continue to learn. I love it. Thank you guys so much. I can't wait to get back into the city and actually, you know, see faces in real life. <laughs> so much fun. Okay. So thank, fun. You, thank you too for being our first couple on Bar Talk. Yes. And we are going to dance out. Are you ready? You can bring the whole family. You can bring the dogs. Everybody Come here, can dance. Guys. Come here, buddy. Come here, guests. Come here. Oh. Oh, there they are. <laughs> there they are. Okay, get ready. We're going to dance out. Let's do it. Good. Good.